What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. What's the most random reason for which you've decided to brew a beer? For me, it might be this one. I found a random glass that I liked, cued by Elementary Brewing Company's video of uh, going into a thrift shop and finding some cool glassware. I took the same approach, went to Salvation Army and found this beautiful Hofbrauch glass for like two bucks. It's a beautiful glass and right now I'm drinking a Jack's Abbey Copper Legend for it. Uh, it is uh, Oktoberfest season after all. Um, but I've been dying to brew a Pilsner to go into this Pilsner glass. And that's really the main reason I'm brewing this beer today. <laughs> Bunch of other stuff though too. Uh, my parents are coming into town and uh, if you watched my video about the Brew One Pale Ale uh, where my dad basically tasted that beer, you know he really likes good home brew. So I wanted to make sure that he was accommodated. And also um, the only beers I have on tap right now are a double IPA, 9%er. It's not really his kind of beer. And also a Raspberry Berliner Weiss sour beer. So again, not really his kind of beer. He's more of a Pilsner guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and brew up a quick Pilsner using a, uh, a method that I think is gonna get us a relatively fast fermentation and get this hopefully granted glass in about a week. Now I made a poll on uh, the channel's community page uh, not too long ago asking if I was to rebrew a Pilsner from any of the Pilsner series that I had done in 2021, um, which one would it be? And it was a close tie between the Czech Pilsner and the New Zealand Pilsner. And everyone's calling for triple decocted Czech Pilsner because you hate me and because you want me to spend 12 hours brewing one day. I will oblige you at some point, but it is not today. I secretly was hoping that New Zealand Pilsner would actually win that, that poll, and it didn't win, but I want to make it anyway, and you're getting a New Zealand Pilsner. Czech Pilsner number two will come around eventually anyway because I love those beers. But if you want to see the coction mashing, don't worry. I'm going to be doing that again in the very near future, so keep your eyes peeled for that. In the meantime, we're going to be cranking out a really nice New Zealand Pilsner. This beer really should be crisp, it should be refreshing and fruity, and it should highlight some of the best that New Zealand hops have to offer. Before we jump into the recipe, I want to give a big shout out to a couple organizations for helping make the video possible. Firstly, Northern Brewer, they helped provide some of the ingredients for this batch of beer and uh, definitely check them out for your shopping needs. Secondly, Clawhammer Supply, I'm going to be using their 10 gallon 240 volt brewing system today to make this beer. So do check out both of those if you are curious about them. The grist for this beer is gonna be simple um, and also a little bit different than when I made my previous New Zealand Pilsner. So I'm gonna be starting out with 10 pounds of raw North Star Pils. Um, really, you can use any Pilsner malt you want to make a good New Zealand Pilsner. Ideally, you're using New Zealand Pilsner malt, but I couldn't find any. And I always use Weirman Pilsner malt in almost everything else, so I really felt like I wanted to try something new. And I've had a couple beers with North Star Pils before, and I really wanted to try it out. It's an under-modified, light color uh, Pilsner malt that's domestic here in the United States and uh, produces some pretty delicious flavor. So we're gonna be using 10 pounds of that as the base, and then I'm adding one pound of Maris Otter, almost like it's a specialty malt. I'm hoping the Maris Otter will add a little bit of a breadiness to this and it will add a little bit of roundness to the overall feeling without adding any sort of intensity like you would get out of Munich malt or Vienna malt um, or definitely not like a caramel malt. So then of course, because this is a Pilsner and I'm gonna be using straight RO water, uh, we're gonna be adding a quarter pound of acid malt from Vyramin to keep that pH under control. And actually I kinda wanna mash this a little bit on the lower pH scale. As far as hops go, I'm gonna be using all New Zealand hops in this as is uh, the best way to approach this, I think. Uh, so to bitter, I'm gonna be using Green Bullet. Um, this is also known as Super Alpha, depending on who you ask. Um, the Alphas are not so super on mine. It's 12.7, but still respectable bittering hop. We're actually gonna be using first wort hopping as a bittering method with half an ounce going in as a first wort hop, giving us about 25 IBUs. Then nothing else goes into the boil until the 10 minute mark where we're gonna add uh, one ounce of Nelson Sovin, which is uh, a great flavor hop, giving us notes of berry and white wine. Uh, and that's going to give us about 13 IBUs. And then at zero minutes, we're using a legendary New Zealand hop that has been hard to find and acquire over the last couple of years, but I'm really happy I could now, and that is Rewaka. Rewaka is a classic New Zealand hop that's gonna give us loads of fruity character and um, kind of almost like a lower alpha galaxy effect, I think. So it should be interesting to see what that does. Uh, supposedly pushes lime pretty heavily as well, just like Motueka does. Um, so uh, that is gonna go in at zero minutes and that's gonna be one ounce of it. Sometimes New Zealand Pilsners are dry hopped, sometimes they're 
not, I'm choosing to dry hop mine because I think it adds some really nice character, especially with the fruitier hops. So I'm gonna throw in one ounce of Rewaka and we'll leave it in the beer for about three days. For the water profile, um, you guys have been asking me a ton of times why I'm using spring water instead of distilled water. And I think I have a very good answer for that and I think it's justifiable for myself. But at the end of the day, spring water means different things around the globe. Um, and considering I have a global audience, I think it would be fair to return to using a neutral, consistent base for a water profile uh, to give to. So you guys can have a consistent and replicable uh, experience making water profiles off of my examples. So that's not distilled water, that's RO water. I went ahead and I installed an RO system in my basement and it is now pumping out water with a complete uh, total dissolved solids count of nine parts per million. So it is virtually distilled water uh, and is a great base to build a water profile off of. So for this Pilsner, the following water profile should get us a nice kind of semi-balanced character while still remaining relatively soft. That water profile is 33 parts per million of calcium, three parts per million of magnesium, 13 parts per million of sodium, 52 parts per million of chloride, and 49 parts per million of sulfate with zero parts per million of bicarbonate. I'm choosing a balanced sulfate to chloride ratio here. Sometimes you'll push the chlorides a bit here to get a little bit maltier Pilsner character. Sometimes you'll push the sulfates to get a snappier hop bitterness, but at the end of the day, I think balanced is really where this is supposed to be all while trying to keep that water profile as light and soft as possible, adding minimal ingredients. So to get that water profile, we're starting off with eight gallons of reverse osmosis water, adding two grams of gypsum, one gram of Epsom, one gram of sodium chloride, and two grams of calcium chloride, also the mash. For the yeast in this one, I'm using a simple and classic lager strain that is ubiquitous. It is Saf Lager W3470, one of my absolute favorites. And the reason I'm using this particular strain today is because I want fermentation to be finished quickly while still remaining clean. So I will actually be fermenting this at a much higher temperature than a traditional lager would be fermented at. Um, and I will not be doing it under pressure. One of the best ways to get a consistent, delicious, clean lager without fermenting under pressure is to use a hybrid lager yeast like W3470. We'll ferment this one probably around 68 Fahrenheit, which is pretty freaking warm for a lager yeast, but it will get the job done in three to five days, and that's what I really need out of it. This strain is also available in liquid form as Imperial Global, Y Yeast 2124, and White Labs WLP 830. For the mash on this beer, um, I'm gonna be taking the easy route here and using a standard single infusion mash at 152 Fahrenheit because I'm just saving my energy for the decoction mash you all wanted me to do. Really, any Pilsner style should be step mashed or decoction mashed. I do not have the time and energy for that right now, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna be doing a standard single infusion mash for this. It should get us relatively similar characteristics. And at the end of the day, uh, it's gonna really probably be pretty much 99% of the same product as I would get if I step mashed it. So I'm not really too concerned about that. If you wanna step mash it, feel free to do so. If you wanna decoction mash it, feel free to do so. Um, but in my case, I will not be doing that. Anyway guys, I'm really excited to get this thing going, so let's go ahead and cut to the brew day footage. So I started out by adding eight gallons of reverse osmosis water into my 10 gallon 240 volt claw hammer supply system and started to heat that up to that target mash temperature of 152 Fahrenheit. Uh, this took about an hour and 45 minutes for the RO water to collect, but I was also heating the water as it simultaneously collected. But at the same time, I was measuring out all of my water salts, adding those into the water as it uh, collected and heated up. And I also measured all of my grain and milled it out. Once the water actually fully collected to eight gallons and was at that target strike temperature of 152, I added in my entire grain bill, mashing in and breaking up any clumps uh, and dough balls as I saw them to ensure good even distribution of the mash. Once the mash had rested for about 10 minutes, I pulled a pH sample to confirm the mash pH and I found it to be on target at 5.36, so no additional changes were needed for the pH of the mash, and I let it continue for another 50 minutes to reach the full hour of mash time. Once I hit that one hour mark, I raised up to 170 Fahrenheit for a mash out, and then I pulled out the grain basket and let that drain for about 15 minutes. While the grain basket was draining and while the wort was heating up to a temperature slightly below boiling, I added in my half an ounce of green bullet as a first wort hop. 
This sits in the wort as it heats up from mash temperatures up to boiling temperatures uh, and just has a different effect on the bitterness, I think. Once I hit that boil, I did nothing uh, because there was no required boil addition at 60 minutes. So I went ahead and waited until 10 minutes from the end of the boil, in which case I added a one ounce addition of Nelson Sovin. And I also added in a Whirlflock tablet to help with clarity and some yeast nutrients to help with a quick fermentation. I let the boil continue for another 10 minutes until it ended at zero minutes and I added my one ounce of Riwaka at that time. At this point, I did a quick one pass chill through my counterflow chiller down into my anvil bucket fermenter and I put that in a fermentation fridge to wait and uh, slowly cool down further until we reached an appropriate pitching temperature of about 60 degrees. Uh, at this point, I pulled an original gravity sample and I found an OG to be pretty much on target at about 1053. Once we got down to the target pitch temperature of 60 Fahrenheit, I pitched in a single packet of Saf Lager W3470 dry lager yeast and left it to ferment. All right, so for the fermentation of this beer, it should be relatively simple and straightforward, especially if you're taking a quick lager approach like I am. So what I'll be doing is taking uh, my Saf Lager W3470 and pitching that at about 60 degrees and then bringing it up to 68 degrees. The reason I pitched so low at the beginning is because I want to avoid any sort of pitching related off flavors. Then bring it up to that higher temperature and the yeast are gonna go nuts. Um, they're gonna ferment for probably about three to five days and be completely finished. 3470 will actually ferment just just as fast as a kvike at those high temperatures. As soon as that initial fermentation activity is starting to wind down, around like day three or four, I'm gonna go ahead and toss in one ounce of rewaka for dry hops, and leave those in the beer until it's finished really, which only should be like another two days. Now, if I was doing this in a pressure fermenter, I could have it spunding and ready to go probably in less than a week. I'm not gonna be doing that for this beer though. I'm just gonna do it in a regular anvil bucket fermenter and then transfer it into a keg and force carbonate overnight at about 50 PSI. That will get us very, very close and that will get the job done as far as a quick lager goes. And of course, this is a fantastic candidate for pressure fermentation if you have the equipment to do it. So it'll actually shave a couple days off of it, but I've only got one setup of the pressure fermenter right now and it's currently full. So the 3470 strain and its derivatives are fantastic options for this, but there's a couple other options out there as well that are slightly different strains. Firstly, Lalaman Nova Lager. This is a fantastic lager strain that I played with not too long ago and it made a fantastic Hellas at a higher temperature. That's a great way to do it, uh, ferments pretty quickly. Also consider Lutrik Weik. Uh, we'll get the job done at a very high temperature in a matter of three to five days. Just manage your pH on that one. Be careful to mind the pH drop as that will drop the final pH of the beer down to like four. That'll definitely be a lot more acidic than you're used to if uh, you don't take any precautions to get around that. There's plenty of great clean ale yeast options out there, so do your own research to find out uh, what really works best for you uh, in those circumstances, but um, there's plenty of good ways to make a pseudo lager using ale yeast. So I'm very excited to see how this goes, but please remember that this is a quick lager. I'm taking a ton of shortcuts here, so if you are a purist or a traditional lager brewer, please don't look at this as a traditional and pure way to make a perfect New Zealand Pilsner. This is purely something that will get me a pretty good New Zealand Pilsner in a week. That's really what I want out of it. Trust me, if I wanted to show you how to make a competition winning Pilsner, I would be doing a lot more work than what I'm doing right now. So um, with that in mind, I'm excited to see how this turns out in the next week or two. So until then, cheers. Fermentation for this beer went really fast, as is expected. So uh, I reached a final gravity of about 10.08 in about four days, which was really good. So uh, three days into the fermentation, though, I added my one ounce of Riwaka dry hops. I let those sit in the fermentation for another three days. Uh, so the total time in the fermenter for the beer was actually only about six days. On that last day, I transferred into a keg and I burst carbonated with a really high pressure CO2 uh, as it cooled off. It was actually pretty much ready to serve the day after. Unfortunately though, because I only chose to pitch one packet
bucket of W3470. Uh, I actually had a decent amount of sulfur off flavors that I had to deal with and fight through for the next couple days uh, in the keg. That being said, they went away relatively fast as I was able to just off gas them and let them condition in the keg for the next couple days. So not a major issue, but definitely one that could have been easily avoided. So the beer is called Kiwi Pills, and it comes in at 5.9% ABV and about 40 IBUs. For the appearance of the beer, it's pouring a really nice looking light golden color. It is actually entirely clear. Uh, unfortunately though, because I live in a super humid area right now, um, all of my glassware is condensing over when the cold beer is poured into it, so it's kind of hard to see that clarity. But uh, nonetheless, it's a nice clear beer. It's delicious and uh, really refreshing in the humid weather. I'm actually really happy with the head retention on this and with the lacing that it leaves. Despite the beer not being step mashed and being pretty much entirely Pilsner malt. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. All right, so now let's go in for aroma. So for what it's worth, I mean, Pilsner glass is kind of hard to get aroma out of, but um, I'm getting a decent amount of that classic Nelson Sovin character. So that kind of white wine grape uh, and also a little bit of the berry notes uh, that that hop is pretty famous for producing. I'm getting another kind of berry on top though, and I think I'll talk about that later. I think it's strawberry. Um, and then maybe a little bit of tropical fruit hint, but there's a really nice kind of satisfying Pilsner malt, uh, hay-like, crackery-like kind of character coming through the aroma as well. So now let's go in for mouthfeel. Yeah, this is hitting a spot. This is a crisp, refreshing lager here. Clean, very clean in the mouthfeel. It's got a nice softness to it. It's got that crispness you want out of a lager. It's got a good level of carbonation on it to keep it very lively and effervescent. Um, and it's actually quite nice in the way that this works out. No real hard edges other than the crispness. Um, the whole thing feels rather soft, to be honest, and that's that water profile doing what it needs to do there. But now let's go in for flavor because that's really where this is uh, quite a unique beer. The malt flavor in this really shines through quite nicely. Uh, it's not the first thing you taste though. The first thing you taste is a assertive bitterness, um, which I personally love. I love when Pilsners take that bitterness and go up to that 40 IBU threshold and, and try to push that a little bit. Uh, that crisp character of the lager really accentuates the, the snap of the bitterness, I think. It's really nice how that works. And then there's a decent amount of hop flavor in here, much more so than the last time I brewed the New Zealand Pilsner. Last time I made this beer style, I was kind of disappointed in the results. Felt like it wasn't really uh, enough of that classic New Zealand hop character. I think I used Motueka that last time. And then here I used the Rewaka, which has twice the oil content of a Motueka. And of course the Nelson Sovin in there at 10 minutes makes a big impact because you're getting a ton of that Nelson character, the white wine and berries. Uh, and then also just loads of strawberry, I think uh, I'm getting from the Rewaka. I don't know if this is actually the case or if uh, I'm just kind of imagining New Zealand things, but I feel like there's some kiwi in this. I think the other thing I'm getting a lot of too here is the honeydew green melon. Um, very nice kind of character there, maybe a little cantaloupe character as well. And the grain flavor is really nice, a little bit of honey sweetness, a little bit of that crackery hay character. Um, but it really comes in the finish and it's very satisfying. It's very fresh tasting, it's very good. Um, so the uh, North Star Pills did a really fantastic job with that. I don't think the uh, Maris Utter really did anything to this beer other than add color though. Um, I can't really identify any sort of contribution from the single pound that I threw in, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it didn't really make a big difference at all in the grand scheme of things. Now, I did indeed get this beer ready for my dad by the time he showed up because it was such a big hit last time I had him on the channel. I figured I'd uh, go in for round two of having dad on. So I hope you guys enjoy his commentary on the beer. Um, it was a bit younger when I served it to him a couple days back uh, and had a little bit more sulfur character than uh, it needed to have, I think. Uh, but that has now hence gone away matter of just letting that gas express out and uh, just venting the keg every so often until it doesn't taste like sulfur anymore. It, it honestly only took a couple days. Um, but yeah, I could have used Nova Lager instead. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna cut to what my dad has to say about this beer and I'll uh, catch up with you after that. 
Uh, you guys <laughs> asked for it. Uh, <laughs> oh. I brought the man himself back oh. uh, for round two here. So <laughs> once again, oh, I have uh, delivered a beer to my father within a week yeah. uh, of him arriving <laughs> and actually tasting it. So um, again, we're going to have to see what my dad thinks of my kind of uh, quickly and um, maybe carelessly brewed beer here. Oh. So. Let's find out. I'm sure. <laughs> Great love went into it, and that's all that matters. Well, yeah. we shall see. So. <laughs> uh, Prost. Prost. Gesundheit. Danke schön. Jawohl. <laughs> so uh, this is a New Zealand Pilsner, right? So um, just to bring you up to speed, Dad, I guess. Um, so mm. this is a beer that is, it, uh, it's a relatively standard Pilsner base. Um, it's mostly mm. Pilsner malt. The whole thing is added uh, is made with some standard lager yeast and then some uh, New Zealand hops. So mm. the biggest thing I wanted to to see what you thought about uh, was the New Zealand hops uh, here. And yes, if, uh, yes. If you're getting anything in particular <coughs> off of those, uh, well, what, what what does it taste like? Oh, first response would be schmeckt gut, yeah, mein Sohn. But I really appreciate the distinctive. Uh, taste of the New Zealand hops. Yeah, there, there is a difference. So, yeah, a little, a little think? bit different uh, with, with the fruity aspects of it. But uh, I think it works beautifully from last evening until tonight. It, it's a hundred percent improvement. Yeah. I would say. So today's Sunday. I brewed mm -hmm. the beer exactly one week ago. Ooh, um, that's so I brewed amazing. it on Sunday of last week, and mm. I had it fermenting mm. relatively fast. I mm. think I kegged it on day five. Uh, so it's actually been in the keg for two days. Now last night there was a slight sulfur taste, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. This was uh, re really some improvement that you've done. So you taste less sulfur now? Oh, less okay. sulfur, definitely so. I definitely think I still so. get a little bit, to yep. be honest. Mm. Um, it's yeah, obviously only a week old. Uh, I probably could have used yeah. hmm. um, a different lager yeast uh, called mm. Nova Lager. I brewed with Nova Lager hmm. once before now. Hmm. Um, it's a yeast that's actually incapable of making sulfur. Oh, it's pretty wow. cool. Um, <laughs> Pretty good. So uh, mm. I probably could have used that, and I would have mm. probably sped things up a bit more in terms of the flavor. Mm. But mm. yeah, I'd agree. It's less sulfur than last night. Very much so um, distinctive. Yeah. But I still think I get a little bit there. <laughs> now it's uh, highly drinkable. All right. So yeah, I think breaking down some of those flavors I'm getting here. Um, so the yep. the New Zealand hops I use, I use mm -hmm. Nelson Sovin, uh, which okay. is a, known to be a very white wine-like flavor, as well mm -hmm. as a gooseberry kind of flavor, is mm -hmm. what I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, used it once or twice before, and it's kind mm -hmm. of been meh. Um, but I'm mm -hmm. definitely getting a lot more of that kind of mm -hmm. berry flavor in this. Yeah. Uh, and then I used Riwaka, which is going to be tropical fruits, and then okay. there's going to be right. some... Now that I, I pick up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Within a week, that's... Utterly remarkable, <clears throat> yes. I'm very impressed by the work that you do. I'm glad yes. it worked out. Great you, contributions <laughs> here. <laughs> At one of these times, it. I'm going to have to have you taste a beer that I've actually not rushed. Uh, oh. <laughs> see if you enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> as, as we say there, that... Uh, Wait, um, where did you get that? Oh, how's this? <laughs> did you guys give him this? Mm, well, uh, the Hofbrau House in München. Ah, it brings back good memories here. Yes. <laughs> and so we're, we're this very pleased with This is why we're not outside or in public at all right now. Uh, what, what do you have brewing right now? Uh, right now, it is uh, a Belgian uh, golden ale hmm. that, that I have. Nice. Yes, and should be ready to keg by the time we get back home. And, uh, and then ready for Christmas as we bring it around. Very good. Yes. How was the hop harvest? Oh, the hop harvest was excellent this year. We had lots of rain. And uh, let's see, the uh, Magnum Cascade turned out quite, quite well. The Cascade did the best. Yeah, Cascade and Pearl were outstanding. Centennial left a lot to be desired. Mm. And uh, Sterling, at least they didn't get in, infected with uh, fungus this year, so. That's, that's good. Got a few. <laughs> now I have to plant some New Zealand <coughs> hops. Yeah. Yeah, this works well. Well, uh, 
Yeah. Thank you uh, for providing all your uh, input, of course. As, oh, as always, it's yes, great to yes, have you yes, here. Right. Thanks that for visiting. Makes and, all uh, the difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We we work for brew. That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, right. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Prost. Prost. <laughs> I don't know how obvious it was, but we may have had a few beers prior to tasting this one. <laughs> but uh, it was always a good time to have my dad on, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. As far as potential improvements go for this beer, um, I would really recommend just getting rid of that Maris Otter edition. That was kind of a stupid idea. Uh, it didn't really add anything other than color, so just stick with either 100% good, solid, really high quality Pilsner malt, um, or maybe throw a little tiny bit of Karamunic one in there for a little added sweetness. Um, but that would really be it, to be honest with you. The beer definitely attenuated a bit further than I wanted it to. Uh, so maybe potentially bring that mash temperature up to a higher degree or step mash in such a way that you get less attenuation. And I'd also recommend not using W3470. Um, if you're trying to drink this beer as fast as I did, use Nova Lager, it won't have as much sulfur character, if any. Um, W3470 makes a perfectly fine lager. It just, it needed a little bit more time to mature before actually getting that uh, sulfur character to go away. That's really all I have for potential improvements though. The beer is absolutely delicious. It's a great end of summer brew. Uh, so I'm really happy I have it here on uh, tap. And if you enjoyed the video, you enjoyed my dad's commentary, please go ahead, hit that like button. Uh, I really appreciate it. And also subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this one. Let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are on brewing New Zealand Pilsners. How does this recipe stack up to something you've made and what recommendations do you have? Uh, if you wanna support the channel, please consider picking up a t-shirt like this one. This and many other designs are available in my Teespring store, which is in the merchandise link in the description box. I also have a Patreon and my Patreon supporters make huge moves for this channel. Big differences have been made via Patreon, like the addition of that RO system, which helped me brew this super clean Pilsner. I really do appreciate the support that my patrons are giving me. Uh, you guys do make a huge impact. There's also the uh, channel memberships option and the super thanks button if you feel inclined to hit either of those. Really do appreciate it regardless. And lastly, there's an Amazon store, which I have linked in the description box as well, where you can find all my recommended home brewing equipment, as well as the channel production equipment if you're curious about that stuff. If you want to follow me to more than just YouTube, please go check out the uh, Instagram and Facebook links. That's at The Apartment Brewer on both platforms. You'll see some more frequent content there, as well as uh, get an idea of what's going to be coming to the channel in the very near future. And last but certainly not least, if you guys are still here, I really appreciate you watching all the way to the end. I put a ton of work into these videos and they take a long time to make. So I really appreciate it if you watch the whole thing and you get the most out of it. So this one goes out to you guys. And uh, until the next one, cheers. Probably need a little powder makeup. The yeah, the hat. Oh, uh, fine. All right. Lowest mine hoot. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Now, if I had known when I came over here, would have brought the suspenders. And the monocle. No, you would not so have been allowed be on all camera. Set. No. <laughs> they, they would haul me off. <laughs> who, who brings this guy? Not, not at all. Here go. Ooh, you, know. uh -oh. you gotta make sure that the fit's good, right? Yeah. Well, it's a huge, a big head, grosser. Yeah. Grosser yeah. Kolf. Yeah. yeah, Kolf, yeah. Mm. yeah. That's good, you're, you're learning. Ah, oh, yes, I got a few, a few tricks <laughs> up my sleeve. That's good, that's good. So when are you gonna cut this? Yeah. I was hoping you wouldn't notice. Uh, but no, I can turn that off. Oh, so. A lot of filler. Here. <laughs> <laughs> well, last time, last time we got a lot of good, uh, good material out of that one. Oh.